Hey there, thank you for continuing supporting my videos and coming back to my channel. But you know what else needs your support? The Black Lives Matters movement. In the description below, you'll find links to donation pages, petition pages, and ways to support black owned businesses. Racism is still very much an issue, even if the topic is no longer trending. Thank you so much, and now back to your normal video. Hi there and welcome back to my channel down to the last page. Now today's video is going to be on my very first 24 hour readathon and not just any old readathon, it's the book 2 hot squad readathon. Sorry I, I, I don't know why I did that, I really wanted to use the sound effect. It's the book 2 hot squad 24 hour readathon and just as the name suggests I'm part of a group, a Twitter group called the Booktube Hype Squad and um, within our group we hype each other, we help um, with each other's videos, we sort of bounce ideas off one another and in other words just enjoying and getting involved in book like content. For various reasons and obviously the unfortunate impact of COVID-19, um, a lot of the people in the group are going back to either work or school and just as a last hurrah we decided to put on our own 24 hour readathon. So we never had a particular theme or um, topic for the readathon, so I already picked my um, TBR for the readathon and I'll be reading the series Classroom of the Elite by Shiogo Kunigasa. The series already is, is currently ongoing and has about 11 plus um, volumes or 11 plus books currently and there has been an anime created with the, with the same name and that covers the first three volumes of the first three books. So I have seen the anime which is fantastic and I have read or volume just to see if it all lines up which it has and for this readathon I will be starting from volume 4. Um, the other thing is that the volumes don't just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 4 and then the next one's 4.5 there are some half volumes that are involved. So um, what I hope to do is and I think this is quite ambitious is read about four or five of the volumes if not all of them in the series um, to be able to complete it for this readathon. Now I will be providing a quick synopsis of what ha what's happened between volumes one to three and it will be non-spoiler and if you would prefer to just go straight over to the vlog I will be putting a timestamp in the description below so you could go ahead and start the vlog. Now the story classroom of the elite follows our main person Ayuna Koji Kiyotaka um, as he attends Tokyo's Metropolitan Advanced Nurturing School. This is a school that's basically designed by the Japanese government in supporting and making sure that they create the perfect, the next generation of um, people to help support and run the country essentially. And within this school, um, the students are given a huge degree of freedom. And when I mean, I mean a huge degree of freedom, it helps them uh, simulate very close to what it would be like in real life, um, be giving them those sort of responsibilities, um, no one having to um, coddle them, no one having to expect them to do anything. So that's the sort of freedom we are talking about. So the classes in the school are split into four groups, ranked from A to D. Class A containing the top bright students, the, um, the elite of the elite, and the school then shoves everyone else that they find inferior into Class D. Our main character, Ayuna Koji, is one of the members of Class C. He's also a very unmotivated, quiet, not looking to make any friends, and he's very bad at communicating. Even during the class introductions, he struggles to be able to find something positive um, to, and interesting to say about himself to his fellow peers. We also meet two other characters in Class D who play a big part in um, Ayuna Koji's school life, which are Horikita Suzume and Kushida Kyoko. Now, Horikita is a very standoffish person, uh, she's very hostile, not looking to make any friends, and then you've got Kushida who wants to make friends with the whole class, complete opposite of Horikita. After the class introductions are done, the students find out the basic rules and uh, basic premise of the school. And on top of that, they also find out that they are awarded points at the beginning of every month. These points can be changed into currency, and there's also no restriction on what they can spend these points on. The school itself is elite not only by name, but elite by nature. You could find anything you possibly can on this campus. We're talking cinemas, entertainment outlets, shopping outlets, cafes, um, convenience stores, uh, gaming stuff, anything, you name it. And again, like I mentioned, the kids are given such a certain degree that they could use their points anywhere. But not only that, because they're not coddled, they're not expected to even turn up to class, the kids could be sitting in class, they could not even be paying attention, they could be talking, and while, whereas the teacher just carries on as if nothing's going on. So the kids are literally put in an environment where all their choices is down to them and no one's telling them what to do. 
the kids go ahead and enjoy the spoils of the school. Um, not only that, they also enjoy the fact that there's no one, there's no rules implied and pushed on them. Um, in the assurance that they'll get their points topped up at the beginning of the month. But there were two things that they had missed out. One, the basis of how the points are collected, and two, how you can actually lose points. It's a trap! It slowly dawns on Class D that their time at the school will be a battle of Class 2 primacy between the four classes, and being already in Class D puts them at an automatic disadvantage. However, through hard work and scoring high on tests and the general um, tests that the school administers to the classes, Class D can earn points back and eventually claw their way up to Class A status. As each individual's performance does go to the overall points of the class. So Ayana Koji and Horikita spend the whole of the first term making sure their classmates survive and, and no one gets expelled. Horikita herself does have her own goal as she's trying to make her way up to class A status, believing that it was a disservice to her being put in class D in the first place. As we get to volume three, book three, we get into summer break and the whole school is taken on an all expense paid cruise. However, the pleasantries don't last long as the school administers their first official task to the classes. They're all dropped off on an island and are expected to survive over a certain period of days and each class is allocated a certain amount of points. Now this could be spent on anything. It could be anything from camping equipment, tents, water, um, to also luxurious items. Each class is given the option to spend their points on whatever they want. Each class also has to pick a team captain slash leader and they also need to keep the identity of their team captain secret from the other classes. And in doing so, we'll try and find out the other selected captains of the other respective classes. This means they could also lose or gain points depending on if they identify the correct team captain from each class. Class D had many obstacles to overcome. Not only did they have the task at hand, they also had to be very cautious of the other classes and there was also a rising tension within their own group. Once the island task comes to a conclusion, there are some surprising winners and losers. But what's more surprising is that Ayona Koji states that it was solely Horikita who not only devised but orchestrated Class D's plan, which ended up with the result that Class D received at the end. This puts Horikita in good favour with the rest of Class D. Horikita, who started off being quite hostile towards Ayona Koji, starts warming up to him, believing that this is coming from a place of sincerity. However, we do find out that Ayona Koji has his own ulterior motives. It's a trap! One thing I did forget to mention was, during the first term, Ayana Koji and Horikita do come to blows with the representative of Class C, Ryu and Kaku, and he's definitely out to get his own back on the pair. And I know I never mentioned much of um, Kushida, however, there are certain things that do prop up um, within volumes 1 and 2 and we do also find out she's not as innocent as she seems. Now that was my synopsis of Classroom of the Elite volumes 1 to 3, on to the vlog. Morning everyone, it's the morning of the readathon. Um, so it's currently, what does that say? 8.28 in the morning, so we go get myself uh, set up, get ready, and start about 9 a.m. this morning. So just check out my attire for today. My t-shirt, it just says, I don't know if you can see it, that's what I do. I read books, I drink coffee, and I know things, so I thought this was appropriate attire. Uh, I'll leave um, details in the description below about where I got my t-shirt from. I've also got other ones like similar like this book related sort of t-shirts which are quite funky and we'll be seeing them over the course of the next few hours. So this is the first one. I um, most likely will be drinking a lot of coffee so. <laughs> Back to start, I'm ready. I'm just to get my glasses. Um, my tablet ready, reading, trying to read. I think it's about 10 plus volumes of um, Classroom of the Elite. I had already started reading this before. There is an anime, there's an anime adaptation from the light novels, which I've already seen the anime, but I did also want to go through those volumes and they cover volumes one to three. So I'll be starting with volume four, um, and they've also got half volumes, so volume four, then 4.5. Um, and again, I think it's about 10 plus volumes. It's hitting about 11. Currently, the series is ongoing keep me busy so yes uh, stay tuned I will be commencing in a minute I'm just gonna go grab my um, coffee um, I've also got some food so and I've got plenty of snacks and stuff this is my first uh, setup of the day I'm sort of just sitting on the floor 
there's like a little sofa thing behind me but I prefer to just sit on the floor and um, I've got the garden door open right in front of me to get some air because I probably need a lot of air stop me suffocating in here and it's ridiculously warm in the UK I'm not sure how it's like um, everywhere else in the world so <laughs> here it is I'm um, about to start um, volume 4 <coughs> Castle of the Elite story by Siogo Kinugasa so yes, I've got my cup of coffee, my food's here. Uh, first cup of coffee of the day. And here we go. So hiya, it's about one thirty-six now. Um, I've been going since nine o'clock. I'm currently getting some food ready. I needed to get up after a while. I went from a sitting position all the way to lying down um, horizontally. So I think once I eat and get back to reading, um, I'll be uh, adopting a new reading position. So uh, the book's good so far. Kids have been set a new task. So everyone's got a new task now, but this one's a little bit different to the last one on the um, island. It's no longer class versus class. It's more of um, everyone's kind of been mixed. So I think it's based more on how cooperative they are very interesting because um, so our three main uh, kids are Nikoji, Horikita and Kushida have been they're no longer on the same team I think um, Kushida and Horikita on the same team but Aya Nikoji has been put on another team but it's not just him being put on another team all the classes have been mixed so it's actually quite interesting since the whole premise of the story was the ability for as a class for them to beat the other classes now they have to work essentially with the enemy so it's actually quite interesting and the class one of the class representatives from class C Ryuin who has his doubts about Horikita um, he feels that the results of what happened on the island weren't completely hers and I think he has his um, doubts about what had happened of course this is non-spoiler so I don't want to talk about the big major things that happened however he's onto her he feels like there's another person that's pulling the strings within class D um, and yeah, I'll be quite interested to see how this goes. All the, everyone's sort of discussing, obviously, Ayana Koji and Horikita are still meeting up to sort of plan a strategy. At the end of the day, they're still going to try and work a way to get the best outcome for obviously Class D. But obviously, keeping in mind, they're also working with other kids from the other classes. So this will be interesting to see how this turns out. Hi everyone, um, lunch is now over, so I'm going to head back into it to... Um, get myself kicked, kicked off. <laughs> Started off for the afternoon. So hi everyone, it's evening time. Um, this is my final location, my room, where I will be um, reading until whenever for this evening and I have changed my shirt. I will be putting a picture in so then you can see the full shirt and this one says once upon a time there was a girl who really oh, once upon a time there was a girl who really liked cats and books it was me at the end and I feel like that best describes me because I like cats and books so um, I've already started volume 4.5 I finished four, and it was definitely I wouldn't say an explosive end, but it was a very, it was a very good, intriguing end. Uh, it, the way everything got wrapped up, how uh, the results and the outcome from that first, from the test that they did, and um, there's definitely um, a lot of things and a lot of people that need to give us some answers in this one. So I've already started reading this, um, volume 4.5, and yes, here we go. So morning, this is Sunday morning, day two, well, the other half of the 24 hour vlog. Um, it's about, it's just gone 7 30, so I've got about an hour and a half left. Um, I was up until about just after 2 uh, this morning, last night this morning, just to 
um, get as much reading in so I don't have that long left and I don't have actually a lot of um, chapters left for um, the last volume 4.5 so that's the only volume I got up to and yeah here we go we're literally in the final countdown oh and I am wearing a new t-shirt this morning it says I will never own enough books and I will again leave links to all of these in the description um, and I'll put in a better because it's inverted right now I'll put in a better picture of this um, in the video Hey everyone, so um, I finished reading on about a couple of hours ago now, um, and uh, so this is my, my this is like the wrap up part of my vlog. Um, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. It being my first readathon, it was a lot of fun. There was um, it felt like a especially with this heat, the sort of heat, the heat we're having currently at the moment. It was. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It was definitely a good experience. Was, uh, for being my first experience, it was definitely a good experience. But first and foremost, I have to address that I made some I made some outrageous claims <laughs> um, in the intro about the amount of books I was going to read. Um, you remember? Flashback. What I hope to do is, and I think this is quite ambitious, is read about four or five of the volumes, if not all of them, in the series. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, that wasn't the case. I only got through two volumes uh, volume 4 and volume 4.5. Uh, which I have to say, both volumes were really great. Um, just a quick summary of what happened in volume 4.5. Um, it was obviously coming towards the end of their summer break um, on the cruise ship, and the students actually got a chance to do normal stuff, you know, normal kids stuff, normal teenage stuff, should I say. Um, we do believe that there is um, somebody who might have influenced the results that Class D got from their last task, where they were all in different where all the classes were mixed up in their last task so Horikita believes that there is potentially a traitor among class uh, D. It finished off but it wrapped up quite nicely so considering both um, volume 3 up until volume 4.5 was sort of like the summer break part um, so it was a good conclusion to that segment of the story and obviously um, I can't wait to read through the rest of the series or the rest of the novels in the series and I'll be bringing reviews of those to you soon. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching my booktube hype squad 24 hour readathon. I will be leaving links down in the description below for all the other people who did the readathon so you can go check it out too. And I'll see you all next time.